So I'm going to be changing out the shifter uh, bushings on my 720. That's how much play it has now. Uh, this shifter has 386,000 miles. So it's a little bit worn out. And these are actually simple when your boot isn't completely right. Come on. Oh, the boot may actually be hooked. So on these ones, you pull the shifter bezel and there's a main harness connector for these gauges right here. Push them together and pull somehow. I'll get those figured out and I'll show it to you. But um, there's two here and then there's a bracket inside. You're not going to be able to see it, but there's a bracket inside and a screw on each side. And then the shifter thing will come off and you just turn the shift knob. It's gonna need moved anyways. Where's the spot I can put it? <clears throat> Let's go here. And this column is not, or not column, a uh, center console is not mounted as it should be. Actually, I don't even think it has screws in there. Uh, this truck originally was, yeah, so there's a bracket in there. You can see it right there. There's supposed to be two screws that go down into the uh, floor. They're not there. I've always just had these two, I guess. But I've got the bracket in there to support it vertically. So now, it comes at you. I'm going to need both hands, I think. Oh, no, I got the connector. Oh, there were two connectors. Apparently I unplugged the second one on accident. Um, I'm going to have to stick first gear, parking brake in, which is a bad thing right now because the driveway I'm in has a hill. Also, the wiring for my speaker in the rear because I have a rear speaker in here, is catching on the shifter. Because of the way it's routed. Okay. So now, that was that bracket I was talking about. And then there's two electrical connectors. Oh, apparently my heater cord's leaking. I would explain the smell I've been getting. Either way. This one originally had just a rubber boot. I'm actually, I'm going to take the screw out on one of these sides and route my speaker wiring out of the way to get the console out. Okay, so now got this out. Uh, the boots, boots are a little bit fun sometimes. And also, this is not probably the easiest job to show you. I'll set my parking brake again. And get this thing out of gear. Because it's jamming against this boot piece. But I ordered a kit online that was all factory components. I have to cut that open a little bit more. Which is okay because it's inside of the um, column, or not column, console. I don't know why I keep saying column. Probably because there's a steering column in front of me. <laughs> so I'll cut a little bit over here, try and fold that flat back to where I can get the shifter, the upper boot, to come out. Okay, so now that I got that boot right there up and out, yeah, how am I going to show this? Well, it might actually work. There's a little C-clip. Trying to keep the camera... 
Hey, my phone has a light. Okay, zoom in then. There's a little C clip right there. Use a little pocket screwdriver, pop it loose, and then the shifter, there's a pin that you end up pushing it to the, on mine it's driver's side, it very well could be the other way for yours. I'm not sure. But either way, get the C-clip out, push the pin through, and then you just lift the shifter straight up. And on the bottom, there will be a little cup, which I'll show you the new parts once I get this shifter out, and I'll show you how it works and everything like that. So I dropped a little C-clip. It's probably under the truck. Oh, crap. But this is the pin. Just a roll pin with a flat side on it. The flat side goes to the bottom. And the snap ring hooks into that little lip. I barely got the ring out, or the pin out. And then I figured I could show you this. So, that lower bushing right there will wear out, as well as the upper. The boot, obviously, hasn't been sealing very well. But I like, like to have the video a little bit zoomed out, so there's more time space for me to be in the point of view. These just slide into the side on both sides and these are a little bit hard to get off or and on actually so normally what I'll do is I'll close a vise on the end of it and take a punch and hit the end of it and it'll slip the plastic out oh and there's a piece of uh, spring that comes or it goes inside of these and I got a kit it was on eBay, I don't know if it still is. But, the guy was pretty nice about it. Well, I didn't talk to him. Uh, let me go find my tripod. Okay, so the guy made these combo packs of factory Nissan seals and bushings and that kind of stuff. So, Part number 33862 E9801 is what I'm using for the upper boot, or the boot. And then Bush, whatever. The side paint pin piece is a 32855 Q0100. There's actually two of those. And then this is the top, or the end bushing part. And it is one of the two-pack, I guess. I don't know why they would sell them in a two-pack, but they do. Oh, and it even comes with the new uh, snap ring. So, guy on eBay, he was selling them as a kit. I ordered them. They've been sitting here for I don't know how long because you know how shifter bushings are. You don't really worry about it that much because it's still shifting. Then here we're going to be working, I have, this is an unmounted vise that I have. Um, and basically, your vise should be hanging over the edge of something. And it doesn't really need to be the most secure, but it needs to be able to, the clamp, you'll clamp right below the plastic which this vice doesn't want to do it very well. But you're not even going to clamp it tight. Push the punch on top, which this is, I don't know what size punch, I will read it in a minute. And then, normally, uh, it's the first 720 actual shifter bushing I've ever done. And I'm really counting on these new parts being the right ones. I will try it a different way. I haven't had luck clamping it because the plastic actually has to expand to allow you to get it to go over the ball end that it has. I'm still struggling, as you can tell. But someone asked for me to post videos with me doing something. So I figured I'd do that instead of just 
like updates. You have to you just freaking take a set of pliers and cut it. But I'd really not like to do that. Uh, this might work best too. Clamping it. Punch to this end. Now you guys are in my way. Um. I'm gonna see if I can get a spot where you guys can see. Okay, focus over there now. We'll see if this works. Not very well, at least. Ah. Okay. I might be taking a set of... Or just... I wanted to work. We're just going to try that. I'm a professional mechanic on anything but a 720, I guess. <laughs> Not really. Okay, I'm using a set of wire cutters or bolt cutters, whatever you want to call them. Show them before I uh, show it as I'm cutting. Just figured I'd cut this way. Where are you at? Over there. This is not wanting to work very well either. I'm just not having luck right now. Almost. Also, you're almost falling over, so. There it went. So, that is what's in the end of it. Now installing them is actually easier than taking them off because we'll use tailgate of the truck. Uh, you guys can zoom out. You don't need to be that zoomed in. Okay. So then to install these, You can do it in multiple ways. This was the best way I've found. I'm gonna figure out where you guys can see. Okay. Just push. And it fits. It's supposed to be tight fit. And then take these two side pieces and the spring from the old ones. them in. We're going to find out if I remembered it the correct way or if I have to flip these over. But the spring might be a little bit smaller. But we'll thread them in. And actually may not need to. It may just be a little bit of a pain. Either way. Slips in. I don't remember if it was to the top or bottom, but it slips in. I'll actually clamp that into one of those. But what the spring is supposed to do is as the shifter gets moved side to side, it will collapse and expand, I believe is what it does. Come on. It's uh, not threading in there. So the spring is a little bit small, or big, not ball, small. The hole is a little small in the bushing piece. But that's basically how it ends up looking. And I will, you've seen the removal process. I will get it installed and show how much shifter play we end up with once I get the spring to go in, which make sure to show you guys that. I wonder if the pin's even the right size. I'm gonna go grab the pin.
Well, entertainingly, the pin is the right size. I wonder if that spring, because, okay, that's what it is. So I was wrong. The pin goes through, but it doesn't go through the spring. But there's this, I'll have to show it to you as much as I can. There's a radius on both of them. And I assume the spring goes in there and possibly that goes to, you would want that to be the top because it would push it down. So that makes more sense than trying to fit it through that hole in the spring not even fitting. It would be there. It fits. It moves up and down a little bit, so I'm assuming, so you can push down on it if you wanted to. It's probably not the best thing, but I'll get this installed. I'll show you what the shifter is like. So, preface it. The E-clip is not uh, included. I don't know what this part number is for. It kind of looks like an Nissan part number. But that's the E-clip you need. Uh, part of whoever built this bundles deal was I guess he threw the e-clip in which is nice because I'm pretty sure mine is on the floor and blue is a little low for me to be laying underneath it trying to find it so we'll get this popped in I ended up sh switching to the hole on top on the shifter uh, it got rid of a little bit more play but it definitely doesn't get rid of a lot of play in the system there's still this is in gear wasn't it yeah that's in gear. And we got that much play. It is a truck transmission, not a car transmission, so that would explain some. So the question becomes, was it worth it? Uh, arguably, I would say no. This is in gear because parking brake is off. Got to figure out a way to hold my light. That was bad. Hey. You guys can focus without it. Okay. That's in gear without. Or with the new one. So, was it worth it? Arguably. But, at least I know they're new now. Uh, the real, the one that has a real difference is going to be my yellow one. Somehow it's gotten worn out a whole lot more than this one. Even though this one has two thir or 386 and the yellow one's at 205. But somehow that transmission, there's all sorts of slop side to side in it. Like in gear, it feels like you're shifting from first to fifth. And in this one, it's... Well, you guys saw how much that was. Goes from the gauge disappearing to almost the other side of the gauge and third is almost that side of the gauge so first it's like one gear change the other one's way worse there's fifth reverse so yeah that's how you change these but they're not bad they're definitely not as easy as some of them some of them, the lower bushing is actually a part of the um, internal shift mechanism. And so you just end up with that round ball at the end of the shifter, and that's how you do that. But get the other one done probably by myself because it's getting dark, and it's not very fun to be... Out in the dark doing this. Oh, good grief. I zoomed out and you guys can't see anything. Either way. Well. Have a good one. I'm going to get this thrown together and uploaded because the only video editing software is on my phone. So, talk to you guys next time. Not even going to say like and comment because it's nice, but I'm really bad at responding. <laughs>